Welcome to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Arlington Heights, Illinois. We'll begin today's worship with our congregation's statement of welcome and affirmation. I invite you to speak the words in bold print along with Deacon Tracy. Jesus broke through barriers and brokenness in the world to reach out to all. Our Savior's Lutheran Church believes that all people are created by God and share the same need for forgiveness, hope, and healing. Even on issues where it is difficult to reach a consensus, our Savior's desires to reflect the love of Jesus with a welcoming spirit. Moving beyond the common distinctions of race, national origin, age, gender, identity, physical, mental, and emotional condition or capacity, political perspective, personal history, marital status, sexual orientation, economic or social situation, we seek to welcome all people into a life-giving relationship with Jesus Christ and one another. Welcome to worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome again to worship here at our Savior's Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Rhonda Pruitt. We are blessed to have you worshiping with us today. We have a few announcements just so that you know how to carry on with the week. I want to start off by telling you that our call to worship was part of our statement of affirmation here at our Savior's. We also added a land acknowledgement to that statement of our welcome, and it reads like this. We acknowledge here at our Savior's that our building resides on the land where the Ojibwe, Potawatomi, and Odawa tri indigenous tribes previously lived. We seek to honor and respect these indigenous nations, and we pledge to work for justice, peace, and the well-being of all creation. It is a statement we all need to hear from time to time. I'd like to mention today that we are still registering for Vacation Bible School. Come join us for a week of fun and learning for all of our children. You can volunteer to serve. Registration can be found on our website. And on our website, you can find more information about educational opportunities for everybody here, along with community events for people of all ages. We'll see you on the website or here in person. As we prepare our hearts to hear from our Bible readings today, I invite you to pray with, it, with me this prayer. Holy and living God, may your justice roll down like an ever-flowing stream. Help us to see that no one is outside your love. Remind us that we are not alone thanks to your abiding presence and the ministry of reconciling works. Through Jesus Christ, the free gift of grace, we pray. Amen. 
A reading from Amos. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Let us be the generation of reconciliation and peace. Let us be the truth in love to the lost and least of these. Let us serve. Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. It's me again. Here with another idiom that I heard growing up in our family, I have no idea where it came from, but I remember how often or how well it was used. Something would be happening and we'd hear, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. As a young person, I didn't always understand it and I can't say honestly that I cared. And so often I would respond with, yes ma'am, or no ma'am, to my grandmother or to some elder who was repeating that phraseology. But most times, I didn't know. But now that I've gotten older, I understand a bit better. My mom is here with us at home, 
And as I've been watching my mom with my children, I understand a little bit better how this parenting thing works. You see, my mom, she parented me, but amazingly enough, she disciples my children. When I was young, she would tell me what to do. Go here, do this, say that, don't do that, because she was giving me the necessary life skills and tools. But as I watch her with her grandsons, she doesn't necessarily instruct or indicate. She guides them into their own self-reflection. She guides them into their own thought process. There are times when she's encouraging them, is that what you want to do? Do you know what that's going to bring out? Or are you trying to make this deadline? And then there are times when she makes them think about the consequences of their choices. If she asks them to do something and it doesn't happen in the time frame that she expected it to happen, she'll say something like, you must have been trying to tell me that you didn't want to do it. And my sons will immediately self-correct and say, no, Granny, that wasn't it at all. We just forgot. We meant to do it. The moment I hear that, what plays in my mind, but not out loud, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The more I thought about it, when I heard it from my grandmother, and now as I see my mom teach my children some of these altruisms and some of these idioms that I couldn't necessarily explain, I get it a little bit better. What does it mean when the road to hell is paved with good intentions? It means that sometimes our intent has no fruit, no power whatsoever, and it's our actions that speak for us. You can find plenty of self-help gurus across the internet, on books and in books and in magazines that tell you that actions speak louder than words. And they say it in a bunch of different ways, as simply as they would say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Apologies have action behind them. Show me what you do and I'll tell you who you are. All of these things seem to tell us that there's something that has to do with our actions built into what we believe to be true. Here's the thing. We're Lutheran. Most of us are anyway. And we seem to think that when we try to do the right thing, that's when we're messing up. We are ticking God off. We can't get it right, so why try? But there's another way of looking at this. Sometimes it's our actions that speak about who we are. It's our actions that tell the real truth about what we think, believe, or what we hold to. If you look at our welcome statements, if you look at the land acknowledgement we've added, we have all kinds of things that say, we are a welcoming place. We want to tell you that we love all people regardless of their social or mental conditions, their economic situation, their status. We love all people regardless of who they love, how they love, where they love, what they love, what they look like when they love. We love all people. We have all of the, the, the acronyms and we adhere to this and we tell you about it. You know what's better than telling you about it? Living it. In today's gospel story, there's a lawyer who comes to Jesus and asks Jesus how to gain eternal life. And Jesus tells the story of a man who was taken upon, injured by the world and criminals, and is left on the road to die. People come and pass by this man and they see him laying there. But because he is injured, looks grimy, is bloody, he doesn't have the right look or they are sworn social enemies, they don't help. One steps over to the other side. One casually walks around. One looks and keeps going. And the one person who stops to help is the man who says, we don't get along in society. We're on opposite ends of the spectrum. We don't believe the same policies. We don't think the same way. He does what I would never do. Our communities would never associate with one another. We are social enemies. But here's what I do know. That man is injured and I know pain. I'm going to help that man in his pain. So he lifts the man up, puts him on his donkey, takes him to an inn, cares for him. And then when he has to be on his way to continue his own business, he pays for the man's continued upkeep. 
Jesus, after telling this story, asked the, the lawyer, which one of these four people who saw this man injured was his neighbor? And the man said, the lawyer said, the one that showed him mercy. Jesus said, go and do likewise. The key point for me here is Jesus says, go and do likewise, not go and feel likewise, not go and believe likewise. He says, go and do likewise. In our First Testament text today, we hear, I despise your songs and your dances and your rituals and your offerings. Don't give me any of that stuff, but let justice roll down and let righteousness flow. So I looked up justice and righteousness to find out exactly what's the difference. Well, righteousness for us who are believers is God's standard of wrong and right and what it looks like. Justice is the application of God's standard in our lives. We can't just think God's righteousness or think God's standards. We have to look at and do God's standards. That's where the challenge comes in about living with one another and doing this thing. That's where the challenge comes in, and that's where we as a church have oftentimes failed. Because, see, Jesus tells us that there are two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And part two, love your neighbor as yourself. All of the commandments, the law, and the prophets can be summed up into two, these two commandments. That's what God requires. That's God's righteousness. What does the Lord require of us to do but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. All those things summed up in two powerful pieces, but they're not easy. They're not easy at all. Because here's the thing, when I apply God's standard of righteousness, of right and wrong on my life, God shows me the way that I should go. Now, it's just as easy to say, well, that's common sense. You know, if God says do this for me, then God just must be saying do that for everybody else. God must be saying the same thing to everybody, and anybody who veers off the way I understood God said it has got to be wrong. With those thoughts, with that ideology, we the church have been performers and participators in the wounding of people outside of our doors. Because we've decided that God's direction for us is God's exact direction for somebody else. So let me give you an example. If you and your neighbor, who lives across the street from you, exactly across the street, were to go out and make a left turn, and then a right turn, and then a left turn, and a right turn, and continually do that, you would never wind up in the same place. You would move farther and farther away from each other because you followed the same directions, but from a different vantage point. The news is that God is calling us to live the principle and the standard. In the example with you and your neighbor, you have the same basic principles, to meet at the stop signs and stop, to acknowledge pedestrians and give way, to follow the rules of the road. But there's not one time where you are required to go exactly the same direction in order to adhere to the rules of the road. In God's reign, we are all given direction, and God may be calling each of us to do different things, just as God would call a prophet or a preacher or a teacher or an evangelist or an encourager. God may be all calling us to do different things, but God calls us to love God and to love one another. God doesn't say, as long as they love like you do, as long as they believe like you do, as long as they look like you do. God never says that. In fact, today's gospel story is living proof that that is not a requirement in order to follow the law of God. Let justice roll and let righteousness flow has nothing to do with people out there. It has to do with us in here. You have to live the welcome. You have to be the encouragement. A few weeks ago, I told the confirmation students, 
don't be the person who affirms their faith, be the affirmation of faith. Don't be a person who confirms their decision, be the confirmation. I'm telling you, as part of the church, don't look at the welcome statement and say, this is what we do. Just do it. For then the words that you speak, that you are welcoming, that you are receiving, that you seek to be in relationship with all of God's creature, it comes from the inside and not from a piece of paper with a sentence on it. If we all stick to the commandments to love God and love one another, then God's righteousness flows God's justice rules over all of us, and everybody is included in the umbrella of God's reign. Today, we apologize, we repent for all the ways that we as a church have not let righteousness flow, have not let justice rule and reign. And we ask, oh God, that you teach us to go and do likewise to show our neighbor mercy, to live humbly with you, and to be the welcome we often talk, sing, and pray about. Amen. We are the church. people go to pray it's not made out of sticks and stones and it's not made out of clay we are the church the body of our lord we are all god's children we've been restored you can go to worship but you cannot go to church You can't find a building that's alive No matter how you search We are the church The body of our Lord And we are all God's children And we have been restored The church is not a business a committee or a board it's not a corporation for the business of the lord we are the church the body of our lord and we are all god's children and we have been restored the church it is the people Living out their lives It's called enlightened, sanctified For the work of Jesus Christ We are the church The body of our Lord We are all God's children And we have been restored Let us pray. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Loving God, we give thanks for pastors, deacons, bishops, and church leaders who do their best to live out the loving and welcoming community in Jesus Christ. May they be bold in their call to radical hospitality, inclusion, and the work of justice of all God's diversity. And may we do our diligence in calling them to deeper and more meaningful justice that they might not see. We give thanks for reconciling works 50 years of ministry 
and all of the Reconciling in Christ partners. May their ministry with their members, communities, and the larger church be a mighty force of justice rolling down like an ever-flowing stream. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, your presence is revealed in the shade of trees, the growth of seeds into flowers, and the blessing of plants granting food in their right season. Heal land scarred by deforestation, pollution, or infestation. Teach us to cultivate the earth with respect and reverence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we remember the echoes of prayer in this time of pride, and we celebrate the beautiful diversity of your creation. We lift our voices for people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, gender expressions, black, indigenous, and people of color, people of expansive abilities, and all those who still face discrimination, fear, and violence for who they are. Grant the courage to find their voices and live authentically. Empower us, your church, to be a beacon of inclusion and justice-making. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray that your love may bring comfort to those who feel pain or sickness. Embrace all who feel lonely or excluded and continue to walk next to those who are fighting battles that only you know about. We continue to pray for those who need your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in thanksgiving we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to all those who mourn. Lead us in your grace until, with all your saints, we enter the fullness of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. For everyone born a place at the table. For everyone born clean water and bread. A shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. For everyone born a star overhead. And God creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. For young and for old, a place at the table, a voice to be heard, a part in the song. The hands of a child in hands that are wrinkled, for young and for old, the right to belong. Speak out to witness. 
And now these words from God. May the reckless, overwhelming love of God keep us, guide us, and continue to make us righteous every day. May the extravagant, overwhelming love of Jesus Christ enfold every soul into the work of the church and into the kingdom, queendom, and the reindom of God. And may the Holy Spirit ever call us forward to the path that leads to life. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.